hello guys once again this is Kansas City Academy in today's video I'm going to explain the concept of open circuit in the previous lecture we learned about short circuit and then we spoke about the ideal and practical case of short circuit we concluded that for the ideal case we have a low resistance path that means that a very high amount of current that is an infinite current flows through the path and then the voltage drop across the path was also experienced to be zero volts However, for the practical case, even though we had a very low resistance path with the voltage drop across the path being equal to zero volts, we experienced that the current was rather finite. Let me be quick to explain the fact that when we talk about a circuit, then we want to talk about a closed network. However, in this video, I'm going to talk about an open network or an open circuit. Now, let's talk about the ideal case of open circuit. And I'm going to do that using this circuit diagram. Now, in this circuit diagram, we have a current source I, and then we also have two nodes A and B. Now, we realize that the current is moving towards node A, or flowing towards node A. Now, we would expect that the current move through the path between the two nodes. However, we realize that we do not have any path. Now, when I talk about a path, then I want to talk about the connection where current flows. Actually, there is a path. But this path has a very high electrical resistance close to infinity. And then we also know that resistance offer opposition to the flow of current. And so a small amount of current that is close to zero would like to flow through the high resistance path. And then the voltage drop across the path is also experienced to be infinite because we have a small amount of current multiplying a very high resistance path giving us infinite voltage. Now moving ahead to talk about the practical case of open circuits. Using this diagram, we have a 10 volt voltage source connected across the 5 ohms resistor and then the voltage source is going to drive current through the entire circuit. We also realize that there is a high resistance path between node A and node B. Now whenever this current gets to the junction X, the current is going to split so that we have I2 moving in this direction and then we also have I1 moving in this direction. Now, because we have a very high resistance path here, very little of the current would like to flow through this path with almost all the current flowing through the very low resistance path that is through the 5 ohms resistor. Now, considering the value of the current I2 to be equal to zero, then we can find the value of I1 using Ohm's law. Now, using Ohm's law, I1 is equal to V divided by R. And then we have our V to be 10 volts. And then we also have our R to be 5 amperes. Therefore, I1 is equal to 2 amperes. Now, because we have I1 being equal to I, then I, which is equal to I1, is equal to 2 amperes. Now, let's place a resistor between the two nodes. And of course, we have in mind that this resistor has a very high electrical resistance. Now, we realize that the two resistors are connected in parallel. And for resistors connected in parallel, we have the same voltage expressed across them. And so we can conclude that the 10 volts is expressed across the 5 ohms resistor and also across the resistor. That's the very high resistance that we've placed here. In that case, we have a finite voltage drop that is 10 volts across the two nodes. Now let's try to consider this example. In this example, we have a 20 volt voltage source and then we have it connected across R1, that is 4 ohms. Now we also have a current that is flowing through the entire circuit. And we also notice that we have an open circuit between node A and node B. And this also means that we have a very high electrical resistance between the two nodes. And so very little amount of the current would like to flow through this direction with almost all the current flowing through the R1, that is the 4 ohms resistor. Now, using Ohm's law, then we can find the value of I1 that is flowing through the 4 ohms resistor. Therefore, I1 is equal to V divided by R, which is equal to 20 divided by 4 ohms. Then we have I1 to be 5 amperes. Now, because the value of I1 is equal to I, then we have I also to be equal to 5 amperes. Now let's try to prove the fact that 
the value of I1 is close to 5 amperes and then the value of I2 is also close to 0. Now in doing that, then we are going to use the current division rule. Now from the current division rule, we know that I1 is equal to R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Now before we consider that, then we need to place a very high resistor between the two nodes. Now let's consider the resistor to be 4 mega ohms. Now in doing that, then we have our R2 to be 4 mega ohms, which is 4 times 10 raised to the power 6, divided by, we have R1 to be 4, plus 4 times 10 raised to the power 6. Now, we can assume that the value of 4 is negligible as compared to 4 times 10 raised to the power 6. Therefore, we have I1 to be equal to 4 times 10 raised to the power 6, divided by 4 times 10 with the power 6 and this ratio is multiplied by the value of the total current flowing through the circuit that is i now we have 1 multiplied by i which is 5 amperes and then we have i1 to be 5 amperes and then for i2 i2 is also equal to R1 divided by R1 plus R2. Now we have R1 to be 4 ohms divided by 4 plus 4 times 10 raised to the power 6. And then we can see or we notice here that 4 is negligible as compared to 4 times 10 raised to the power minus 6. And so we have 4 divided by 4 times 10 raised to the power 6, which gives us 10 raised to the power minus 6. Now I2 is equal to 10 raised to the power minus 6 multiplied by I. And then 10 minus 6 multiplied by I, we have I to be 5. And so we have 5 times 10 raised to the power minus 6. Now we notice that this is close to 0. And so we can represent I2 by 0 amperes. Hence, we've been able to prove the fact that the very little amount of current that flows through the high resistant part can be considered to be zero. With the current flowing through the least resistant part, that is through the 4 ohms resistor, to be 5 amperes.